This explains why I'm fighting to legalize marijuana in Lesson 64 with an ode to laughing grass and an explanation of our attempt to have the Terry Parker Day declaration that the law had become invalid on August 1st, 2001st story. Ode to Laughing Grass, first delivered to the 1995 Million Man March in Toronto. Throughout all history, hemp's been a plant of great repute. Four months to grow a mini tree of 20 foot from shoot. More oxygen converted from dioxide carbon smogs. Four times more wood than forestry can chop trees into logs. A hardy plant, insecticides, and fertilizers not. It grows so tall the shade kills weeds for fertile garden plot. With petrofuels with sulfur being burned into the air, a fuel of biomass would help environmental care. Hemp fuel, hemp paints, hemp varnishes, hemp fibers, cloth and rope, hemp fertilizer, oil and plastics, medicines of hope. For crops of untold uses which can soon be realized, our greatest source of biomass must first be legalized. While alcohol debases, vibes of negative grow strong. God's laughing grass makes calm and jolly, wishing no one wrong. There's never been recorded death from using hemp, they say. It's sedative that fits receptors in our DNA. The industry of dirty petrochemicals may fear. Its nature's agri-chemicals will substitute its clear. Its source of protein primary for man and beast alike. The best plant used for finger in environmental dike. The chance that we may yet invade environmental doom. With planet's fastest growing vegetable, there's no need for gloom. The abolitionists charge that on lies are based these laws. Abolishing hemp prohibition is our second cause. This is an order of the Ontario Court of Appeal, Ontario's highest court, with Justices Doherty, Googe, and Simmons, dated the 7th of October, 2003. Remember that date, October 7, 2003. And it's between John Turmel and Mark Pocket, and Terry Parker had an identical application, and it was asking for a declaration that the prohibition on the possession of marijuana, cannabis, in the CDSA, the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, is in accordance with the decision of the Ontario Court of Appeal in R versus Parker, Terry Parker, has been of no force and effect since August 1st, 2001. Remember that date, August 1st, 2001, October 7th, 2003. So, in the 2003 decision, it was proven that the marijuana medical access regulations had failed to work, and therefore the law had been invalid since Terry Parker Day, August 1st, 2001 the day after July 31st, 2001. So, two months after that, when they failed to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada and accepted the decision that the law had been invalid since Terry Parker Day, there was this article, Ottawa stays pot charges in 4,000 cases. Now, Ottawa is making it a green Christmas for 4,000 people. It plans to stay thousands of charges of pot possession as a result of legal battles over medicinal marijuana. The decision will apply to every person in Canada charged with possession of marijuana between July 31st, 2001 and October 7th, 2003, Justice Department spokeswoman uh, Pascal Boulay said yesterday. So, between July 31st, 2001, so starting on August 1st, 2001, until October 7th, 2003, Terry Parker Day, Till the date of our decision I told you about, October 7, 2003, that 26-month period, they dropped all the remaining charges against people who'd been charged with marijuana possession while the law was dead. But they did not expunge the convictions in the criminal records of the 100,000 people with bogus convictions. They only dropped the last 4,000 bogus charges for the last month's worth of people, 
and didn't do anything about the previous 25 months worth of people who got bogus convictions. And I took this right to the Supreme Court of Canada and they wouldn't expunge those convictions. So, the Justice Department intends to cease prosecutions on the cases because of an Ontario court ruling in 2000, Terry Parker, one that found medicinal marijuana users had the right to possess less than 30 grams of pot. Well, where they got that, they made that up. That's not what it said. The judge delayed the ruling for one year in the hope the government would introduce a medicinal marijuana law. But the government did not introduce a law that worked to safety Terry Parker. The Ontario ruling created a legal loophole effectively invalidating Canada's marijuana possession law as unconstitutional because it failed to provide an exemption for medical use. We estimate there are about 4,000 pending files, Mr. Boulay said. However, she said that criminal charges of marijuana possession will still be prosecuted today as a result of the government's announcement yesterday that it will not appeal the medicinal marijuana case to the Supreme Court. What does that mean? Well, they don't say that on October the 7th, the Ontario Court of Appeal ordered that, yes, the law has been dead for the last two years, Termel and Parker are right, the law has been dead since Terry Parker Day, but we have this Hitzig decision asking us to fix the MMAR and bring the law back to life. So we are fixing the MMAR so that two years after the law has been dead, we're gonna bring it back to life. Now, that is what I call the Polkoa defense that people are now using in the courts. Parliament only legislates, courts only abrogate. Which means that when the courts say that a law is unconstitutional, they have the right to strike down laws. But only Parliament can strike up laws. Well, when these judges... Sit, now, there's also Section 2.2 of the Interpretation Act which says, and has been quoted by Justices Philip and Rogan and Chen, who all say that Parliament said that when a law has been struck down by a court, it is to be deemed repealed and cannot be resuscitated and only Parliament can enact a statute, a penal sanction again. Now, the Ontario Court of Appeal, Justices Doherty, Googe, and Simmons, ordered the courts ignore the Interpretation Act that says laws that are struck down are repealed and just consider them absent until we can fix them. And we're saying that the marijuana prohibition struck down by the Parker Court was not repealed, but it was only absent until we fix it. So, are they going to bring back capital punishment by saying that, oh, it was only absent for these last 20 years, it wasn't repealed, and we can fix things to make it not unusual and cruel and bring capital punishment back? Well, that's what these judges did in the case of marijuana prohibition. It was struck down by the courts. It was to be deemed repealed by all the judges who dropped all those charges. And then this one evil court of appeal decided that they were going to bring the prohibition back. And since then, we've lost 1,500 epileptics a year who knew they were epileptic and wouldn't have died if they'd had a joint with them. And that's over the last five years. So that's 7,500 dead epileptics that they hands of Justices Doherty, Googe, and Simmons, and that's just the epileptics in Canada, by these judges who tricked them into believing that the law has been brought back to life, the prohibition by judges, when only Parliament can do that. So that is the Polkoa defense. The Interpretation Act says that when a law has been struck down by a court, it's to be deemed repealed. And it's in direct contradiction to the Hitzig decision, Alan Young's case, where the court said, oh, we fixed the MMAR access regulations, and now the law is alive again. Here's how I explained it in my flyers. On October 7, 2003, the Ontario Court of Appeal ruled in my Parker and Termet appeals that because the government MMAR had failed to work on time in opening access for the sick through the CDSA prohibition, call it a fence between you and your herb, the prohibition fence on marijuana had no longer existed since August 1, 2001. The fence had come down. But the court then ruled they had fixed the marijuana access through the fence, which brings the fence back up. I'm appealing to the Supreme Court of Canada on grounds that only Parliament legislature can re-legislate dead legislation, not the judiciary. Polkoa. 
So the Crown stayed all 4,000 pending charges resulting from when the fence came down on August 1st, 2001, to when the judges say they brought the fence back up on October 7th, 2003. I have made available free forms at my website for appealing convictions stemming from the two years when you could have had you, they should have erased them and you have to go ask. So let a hundred thousand people go ask to have their convictions erased from their criminal records for free. Maybe get the money back for the fines and maybe the money from their lawyers too. This explains why I'm fighting to legalize marijuana in Lesson 64 with an ode to laughing grass and an explanation of our attempt to have the Terry Parker Day declaration that the law had become invalid on August 1st, 2001 story.